All right, Nancy Pelosi got into the Halloween spirit yesterday when she unveiled this terrifying 1,900-page monstrosity known as the House Health Care Bill. Now, we have spent the last 24 hours analyzing this massive piece of legislation, and when it's all said and done, out of the nearly 2,000 pages that sit right here before me, only five matter. And on those pages, yeah, for example, government-funded abortion. Remember we heard, had that debate earlier? People said, no, that's not going to be a part of it. We have government-run health insurance. It's the government option. In the end, that's what's going to matter. We have, of course, as predicted, higher taxes. That means you'll be paying. Now, remember those death panels we spent so much time talking about? Well, guess what? The death panels are back. And then, of course, $500 billion, and I hope the elderly are watching, in Medicare cuts. $500 billion. So forget about this, the 1,990-page bill here. That's all smoke and mirrors. The five pages that matter are right here, and those five pages are the only ones that Americans really need to read, and these are the things they need to know about. And joining me now is Minnesota Congresswoman Michelle Bachman is uh, with us. Congresswoman, welcome uh, back to the program. Sean, thank you. Always a pleasure. All right. Well, the, the, uh, apparently end-of-life counselors are back. I thought, I thought we got rid of that for sure. How did that get back in the bill? Because this is their intention from the start, Sean. This is cradle to grave government takeover of the Pelosi health care nightmare known as this bill. I've got it in front of me. It's heavy. It's about 20 pounds. And remember, this bill was about 1,000 pages. Now it's morphed into 2,000 pages. And that's just the beginning of this horror picture show. I think people have no idea what's coming down the pike. This is the crown jewel of socialism, this bill. And we only have next week to start. Stop it. And as a matter of fact, Sean, this isn't the final bill. The final bill won't come out until Monday night, which is a tremendous insult to the American people. We should have months to actually review this document. The speaker is giving us about 72 hours. All right. Well, now, one of the other things, page 92, one of the main promises the president made was that if you like your insurance, you'll be able to keep your insurance. Now, you have been spending time sifting through the bill. My read of page 92 is, is that is not true. Your interpretation? I, I agree. It's not true. It's, it's very clear on page 92 that people will not get to because it says specifically that people can't purchase private health insurance after a date certain, which means people will ultimately go into a single-payer plan where it is government providing health care and, and only one single government system. That's why this is so bad, Sean. This is socialized medicine, and this is, as I said, the crown jewel of socialism, what Barack Obama, Nancy Pelosi, and Harry Reid have wanted from the very beginning. Well, and I think this is an important point. I want to get back to that in a second, because I think that's a very pivotal point that you're making. I've held up this, higher taxes. Now, this is really important. The Heritage Foundation is calling this a $700 billion tax increase based on their analysis. Do you view it the same way? Oh, it's most definitely a tax increase. I hail from the great state of Minnesota. Our medical in device industry, which is second to none, Medtronic, Boston Scientific, St. Jude's, huge new tax increases on this industry and sean remember christina romer president obama's economic advisor said we're looking at about 5.5 million jobs lost if this bill goes into play why would we want to do that to an already suffering economy tax increases on the middle class tax increases on small sure. business 500 billion lost in medicare for senior citizens People under age 30 having 8 to 12 percent of their income confiscated by government. There's no so, plus here. It's all pain, very little gain. All right. Now, the, w there have been the original CBO scoring of the original House bill. Now, the, obviously, we have the new bill, and we're just dissecting it, and, and it's monotonous, and it takes a lot of time. And it's not the final bill. And it's not the final bill. That's but, right. But the original bill... Literally, we, the CBO even scored it that tens of millions of Americans would be forced into the government system. The Heritage Foundation had it at about 83 million. So as I look at this government option, it's not really going to be a government option. This is going to almost like be a funnel and eventually suck everybody into it, and there won't be any private insurance alternative. Explain how, how that works. Well, because there's a mandate that every individual citizen must be in this government plan. If they aren't in a private insurance plan, they must be in the government plan. And again, as you said on page 92, people won't even have the option of purchasing private insurance in the future. And, and what this will do essentially, Sean, is collapse private insurance 
so that everyone will fold into a single payer government system. Barney Frank said that's the goal. President right. Obama has said this is the goal. That's what they wanted from the beginning. All right, I want to go because the elderly are going to be impacted by this the most because it's the elderly in this that's country right. that uh, that need the most medical care. They're even right. even have a surtax on new medical devices. That means if you get a, yes. a knee replacement, a hip replacement, a hearing aid, that's a, you're going to get taxed extra on that. On a pacemaker, Sean, you'll be taxed on your pacemaker <laughs> well, that'll make on you pace. almost everything. Well, it'll make it, you'll need another pacemaker by the time you know you get the tax bill. But it's all seriousness here. We're going to tax people who need pacemakers and, and knee replacements and hip replacements and hearing aids. And remember, government has always undershot the cost, always, by about a factor of seven to one. Trust me, this will be trillions and trillions of dollars and will sink our ship. Remember, the dollar has lost 16% of its value in the last seven months because of all of our overspending. This is only going to contribute to that. That's why, Sean, the clock is striking 11.59. We need people not only to call their representatives and visit their district offices. I've never done this before, but I'm asking people to come to Washington, D.C. by the car load. And next Thursday at noon, I'll be at a press conference on the steps of the Capitol. I'd love to have every one of your viewers join me so that we can go up and down through the halls. Find members of Congress. Look at the whites of their they'll eyes be and hiding. say, "Don't take, they'll don't be take hiding. away my health care." Congresswoman, they'll be you know, they'll be hiding. They, well, I'll tell you what, John. It's not inevitable. This doesn't have to pass. I agree. And with you. I don't think it will pass if we can get people that literally physically come to Washington D.C. next week, any time next week. But specifically Thursday at noon, we need to pay a house call on Nancy Pelosi and tell her what she can do with the Pelosi health care plan. All right, oh, when you stand back from this and you say, all right, is this really just about health care or is it really bigger than that? And by oh, that, well, I want to I want to say that by that, are we witnessing an attempt by Pelosi, Reid and President Obama and the Democrats to radically reshape American society? Because if we had everything else financially that we've dealt with, are they attempting to change American society fundamentally at its core? Yes, and they already have, and I'll tell you why. An economist from Arizona State University has already calculated, Sean, that in this last year, the federal government has taken control of 30% of the private wealth produced in this country. That's stunning. 30%. Banks, insurance companies, mortgage companies, Chrysler, GM, the whole private student loan industry. Now, this is another 18% of the private economy, Sean. That would be 48% of the private wealth produced in this country. You can't, with a straight face, yeah, so, say that we're a free market capitalist state country anymore. So they're radically altering the relationship between we, we the people yes. and the state. And it's unconstitutional. This is unconstitutional, this bill, because the, you cannot force Americans to purchase a product or service against their will. Well, apparently they're going to do that. They're going to tax them. And by the way, the abortion provision is still included in it's this in bill. There. All right, now here's yeah. my po last political question, because there are these blue dog Democrats. If you go back to 2004 and 2008, these congressmen that are from districts that voted for either George Bush or Senator McCain, mm -hmm. you know, it was about, what, the number's 86. Where where are they on this bill? Are they is this the bill that they've all agreed to behind closed doors? Are they are the blue dogs going to walk the plank, risk their elections, and vote for this? Sean, they are clearly on the fence. That's why this is such an exciting opportunity for us. Like our, your good friend uh, Dr. Mark Levin has said, this is our liberty and tyranny moment. This is it. Yeah. This is about patriotism and manning up. And if we can get Americans literally by the busload to come to Washington, D.C. next week, look their member of Congress in the eye, pay a house call on Congress and say, don't you dare take away my well, health care. Crazy you know, brave. We'll stop this. So you're, you're organizing the, uh, in, and asking people to come with, meet you on the steps of the Capitol yes. on Thursday, and you are asking them to walk through the halls of Congress and try and voice your opinion. And so if, pe if people want to participate, they're going to be there Thursday at noon. Thursday at noon, you can go to michellebachman.com for more information. Right. And we can walk together through Cannon, Longworth, Rayburn, walk through the Capitol, sit in the gallery. Maybe I'll have to show up and, and, uh, and, and observe this so our cameras can see democracy in action. But Congresswoman, we're going to continue.